I did have a budget of about three to three and a half grand. Uh, yeah, we kind of blew that budget. He goes nothing. <laughs> Lazarus died, but he also come back to life. That couldn't be any more perfect. What is that? What am I bodging? Oh, well, a 60 series Land Cruiser. <laughs> Want the good news or the bad news? Well, that sounds like we'll be painting bits of it or all of it. Or... But the good news is, me and you'll be working together. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get uh, we'll get to know each other pretty well, I'd say. Just unlock it. <laughs> James, you're the car guy. Just gonna go and uh, get a few more things, and then yeah, on the team. Oh, are you staying there, or you get picked up? No, I'm staying, son. I brought my swag. I'm I'm camping. He brought a double yeah. swag too, Jace. If you want to jump in. What did he say? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be just shit coming out of his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> You're right there. Right, I'll see the staff. Uh, I'll see you later. I'll go see. get one now. See you, mate. Bye. So I've been looking for a project for quite a while. I've been looking on Facebook Marketplace, CarPoint, um, the Trading Post, and just randomly James threw out there, why don't we look at Auction House? Pickles Auctions pretty much does auctions all the way around Australia online. They also do live auctions. We couldn't believe that the vehicle we were after was actually on there because it's quite an old car and uh, it was actually in the salvage section. So that threw up a few red flags straight away. I really started to do some more digging and the vehicle in question had NRMA written on the windscreen. So I rang NRMA and I sat on the phone for about an hour and finally got through to someone that could confirm with me that yes, that vehicle has a clear title and is not recorded on the written off vehicle register list. Plus any vehicle over 15 year old doesn't go on that list anyway. So the car had a clean title, it wasn't on the written off vehicle register, NRMA, RTA and a PPSR report had confirmed that. It got even better from there because I realized that I knew the vehicle. I knew the guy that previously owned it and had owned it for 23 years. It had all been well maintained, mechanically is quite good for its age. Uh, there is a little bit of rust in the body. The interior was really good. Um, and he was able to confirm this before I went bidding. So I had some really good inside knowledge about the vehicle that no one else bidding would have had got really lucky with this that is a needle in haystack i tell you so i logged into pickles online i created an account and we went bidding i did have a budget of about three to three and a half grand and uh i'll show you what happened here uh, yeah we kind of blew that budget be in mind with an auction house there are fees and that fee for pickles was 13 and a half percent on top of what you paid my top bid was five thousand dollars it actually nearly cost me six grand plus the towing fee to get here. We definitely blew the budget and uh, it just got to that point that we've been looking for so long and in the heat of the moment, I went, bugger it, this is the right time to do it and that's just as important as the money. Uh, it's the right distance from home to go and pick it up being it is close to home for me. I couldn't believe it, we got really lucky with that. I knew the history behind the vehicle um, and this guy wasn't selling it. So there's no point for him to try and, you know, make it better or worse. He just told me about the vehicle. So I got really lucky with all those things. So I went, bugger it, this is the one. And ah, uh, look, in six months time, we won't think of that couple of grand that I blew the budget by. So the plan was because it was close to home, I rang the RTA and um, you could get a permit to drive an unregistered vehicle. Now, I didn't know this, so this is all new to me. Uh, we went to the RTA, we got a registration for one day. You can get registration for up to 28 days. Technically, we could have drove this from the east coast of New South Wales all the way to Perth, and that did cross my mind. 
Anyway, that's for another day. That was surprising to me to be able to get a permit to drive an unregistered vehicle. They allow you to drive six hours a day. So if you live 12 hours away, it would be a two day permit and so on and so forth. So I was only allowed to get the one day. We headed down to go and pick up the vehicle. And when we got there, they wouldn't let us take it. It's like, oh. There were some bumps in this story, I tell you. Their policy is that they will not let you drive away from their yard, especially from a salvage title. I have no idea if it wasn't a salvage title, but it was a salvage yard. So they, they wouldn't deal in, you know, cars that are registrable. So that was a little bit of a spanner in the works. I had all the paperwork there to do it legally. Um, I knew the car was roadworthy because of the history it had had, but it's their policy and uh, that's fair enough. So we did have to get it delivered on a flatbed and it was just another little hoop to jump through in this whole process. I really have learned a lot doing this and um, it's not for the faint hearted, that's for sure. Hopefully this all turns out right. I haven't bought a lemon, but we're about to find out. Well, we just couldn't contain ourselves and the same day we got it home, we started stripping it down, looking for any other little hidden surprises, any other rust, any other damage. We were keen and we got stuck straight into it. Okay, so this is just a big bull bar box, which should fit 90% of the interior and any other grill pieces we take out, bar the seats. The plan with the seats is just to wrap them up in black plastic, tape them up, and uh, if I can get them up into the roof, I'll leave them up there. This is James's little um, hot tip here, a rag for your uh, window winder clip. You got it, you got it. Look at that. Saves using a screwdriver and destroying your door card. That's, yeah. That is really good, I like that. Back. Well, the two front doors look really neat. Get in and um, rip the speakers out. They're going straight in the bin. We are going to put somewhat of a decent stereo on this, unlike Lance, which doesn't have anything, because uh, it will be nice and quiet. We might even put sound editing in the floor before we put it all back together. So, worthy of a decent stereo. <laughs> What is that? That's just, just blow a little bit of aluminium in. <laughs> Got something there. Pull strap. My beard. See, I did have something. It's rare, but occasionally I'm right. There you go. So you can fold a flat, and that's why all the bloody backpackers buy these things, and they're like a mini troopy. Just take the headrest off. Party bus. is a bag and I was 40 something year old now and it's it looks like it is still hold water a bag of water hanging in the back of the car I don't know at what point they thought that was a good design so I peel all this bit of carpet that's stuck to the floor the actual carpet itself is um, yeah, pretty good. We'll be able to wash it up and reuse it. Uh, look, it's really grubby. I think it'll come up all right. It wasn't tearing or anything, and I can't see the point of spending bulk coin on something you just put your feet on. It's gonna be a really nice car. It's not gonna be a show car. But everything else looks friggin' amazing in here. It's a bit of a relief, because if the thing had rust in the floors and things, and you start to wonder whether it was worth the purchase price. But just this little bit on the tailgate, James said he'll even be allowed to do that bit because it won't be seen. And um, yeah, she's looking good. Again, the roof. The roof's gonna be the hard bit. All right, this little sucker is called a caramel wheel. It's uh, one of my new favorite tools. That gets that old pin striping off really well and that shit is baked on there. Like 20 bucks, I think, for, for one of them and that'll do the whole car easily. It is really gentle on the paint. It makes a really painful job a little less painful.
So we've got a couple of hours in the shed, so I'm just gonna get in and clean up the floor carpets. Give them a vacuum first, and then I'll take them up and give them a scrub with some soap and a gurney. And it's just one of those, you just gotta do something when you get a minute things. Once they're really clean, I can leave them out in the sun for a couple of days and really dry them out and also probably kill any germs that are in them. Um, a bit of vitamin D will do them good. And then we can store them away, wrapped up, ready to go back in. And um, just start ticking off boxes like that. Eventually I'll do the seats. Once all the glass comes out, we'll probably get it all tinted while it's out of the car. Uh, so when it's time for the car to go back together, all these little jobs are done and they're just done in a, you know, a spare minute here and there. You don't have two days of doing all these tiny little jobs. That's the plan anyway, we'll see how it goes. So I'll get in back in these bloody filthy, stinking dirty carpets up and uh, go and give them a wash. So as you saw, we got rid of the HJ47 half cut that I'd sit in the shed for quite a while now. Lance just keeps chugging along, so I'm not gonna fix something that isn't broken. We'll keep using it and uh, band-aid him up. And I've always got that parked out the back if uh, I ever so need it, or you know, Lance does finally let go. So we're utilizing that space for the cardboard box full of body parts. That was a really good hot tip of James coming from a panel beating past. Uh, get a big bull bar or bumper box uh, and you can put all your interior in it nice and neat and out of harm's way. I've got the driver's seats down below here and the passenger seat sitting up on top with an old fitted sheet over it. That's the only time I've ever wanted to put a fitted sheet on anything. They're a pain in the ass. Very handy for that though because it does wrap around the top of the box and the seats quite well. Like I said, we're going to get in and pull this glass out. Uh, I've got a mate that does window tinting. What a champion and uh, everyone should get a mate that does window tinting because it's bloody handy when you buy a car. Uh, nothing like nice fresh tint. The only car I've never tinted is Lance. It just wouldn't look right. This one will get some nice dark tint. So we'll get the glass out and probably just ship it straight over to him. He can tint it while it's out. That will really set it off with a nice fresh paint job. So anyway, enough talking shit from me. Let's get this glass out and get stuck into this bodywork. Um, yeah there's no holding back now usually these things it's just trying to get going is the hardest part once you're into it you're flying righto we've got a full day in the shed on lazarus and um i probably should introduce that name now i did say i knew the old guy that used to own this thing and uh was a needle in haystack being able to get the history of it and i asked him about his car i said do you have your car anymore any uh he let this big story go and it was awesome it was just like this is perfect i love a story behind a car and anyway, it come about and he said, it's basically Lazarus. And uh, I looked into the story of Lazarus, not being very religious myself, and uh, Lazarus died, but he also come back to life. And I'm like, that couldn't be any more perfect. So Lazarus, the Land Cruiser, it is, and that's how the name come about. So we'll get in and pull these rear sliding glass windows out first. The plan is to not put those back in. We will take our time though, and uh, try not to damage them because they're good parts for someone else if they do need them. We do have other plans for those rear openings and uh, that'll be cool, but that'll be further on down the track. Okay, so there's just a lip there. I'm gonna try and work my way along and peel it out. hidden surprises under that one so this black sticky shit is um called dab off um i learned something the other day me spray painter mate told me so it is designed to just stay sticky for its whole life doesn't actually set um so that's why it did come out but there is supposed to be retaining clips on that as well so it has been out before 
Anywho, they come out nice, there's no real damage underneath. We'll get in and pull the other one out, and then onto the door glass. Okay, so you get both bolts off the window regulator at the bottom. So the frame has to come out before the glass has to come out and there's some um, screws hiding behind the seal. It is always something simple, it's just a matter of finding those things, like it's just all new, I've never done this before, so we're learning as we go. One more piece. It's, um, it starts to get daunting at this point, pulling a car apart, you don't realise how many pieces there are in them. But, uh, that should allow that to come out now. Maybe. Righto, now the glass should come out. It's fallen down. So it makes it so much easier. Oh, and it has got tint on it. My uh, friendly neighbourhood tinter will not enjoy pulling that off, I don't think. Right, we'll go through, put all the screws back where they come from, and that's less we're going to try and store somewhere, and uh, they'll be there when the time comes to put it back together. Uh, little time consuming things will be repainting these. We just, um, so many little bits. stubborn so we'll use the multi-purpose spanner we'll grind them off well uh, while we're waiting for Jamesy uh, I'm gonna just clean up the back of the chassis with the wire wheel I've really missed it uh, and then when he gets here we'll pull the front windscreen out and just a rear bit of glass here try and look after these rubbers um, yeah I'll get that chassis wire wheeled and paint it up and then measure some steel to get some steel bent up ready for the front and rear bars um, and as soon as we get a minute we'll do an episode on some front and rear bars as well do have a winch in the works uh, just starting to collect some bits and pieces to get this together well james finally showed up he's going to show me how to do this now are we are we going to be able to get that chrome strip again or not i'd say so yeah right so you do have to go outside first I started, I started Googling and I went, no, I'll just wait for James. It took me a little bit of figuring out just how to get the door glass out. So you can buy this again, you reckon? You should be able to, I reckon, so. It's only a crack color rod. You think the neighbors may have wanted a different time for us? So when the screen goes back in one day, is that just a uh, ring windscreen's O'Brien? To put it back in, or? Oh, well. Kind of. No, I'll put them in. Yeah. Yeah, they're only roped in. These ones you got to get a little special tool but because it's got dents all over I think we might have to put new one there's two ways you can do this you gonna kick it yeah oh, it's gonna break there isn't it it's gonna well, break there. it's gotta be replaced either way so you can try it that's been in the driver's driver's vision It'd be easier with the seats in but it would have been it's gonna crack there too look 
don't think I've had enough pressure on the foot. It's even your colour. Too high. Oh, could be about the same, eh? Don't do yourself a mischief. <laughs> Helping? There she cracked. Yeah. yeah, she's busted now, boy. You busted now. So how did they get that back in? Right, but plenty of loom. Yeah, right. That's a, that's pretty much fixes everything, doesn't it? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you're editing this. <laughs> well. Amazing. Woo! Sounds like a good job. So we're in there. Oh! Is that window tint? It is actually. Lucky. Edit? Edit that one. <laughs> You're not either, are you? Probably not. I usually edit around those bits and leave those bits That's in. That one. <laughs> <laughs> what a bitch of a job. There's no way I was getting that out. Definitely an art to it. So we got in the bottom door, roof. This quarter's good, isn't it? This quarter's good. Yeah, no, he's good. Not even rust in the bottom. That's amazing. It's just whatever's up there. A bit of rust up in there. A bit of rust in there. That's where they cut the screen out. Cut them out before. Yeah, right. And they scratch it. Yep. And then that rust. On the, the hardest bit of wiki getting that. No, you'll just join it. There. So, what do you reckon? Just go all the way. It's hard to know what's good and what's not in it, unless you just do all of it. Yeah. Yeah, there's no point leaving this like a little bit here because there's a bit of bulk coming out there. Yeah. No point leaving a little bit here and a little bit there. No. And for the record, there was one roof left in Australia and it was $4,000 and I'm too much of a tight ass. Pretty much. $4,000 is a lot of labour. Might, I might regret saying that, but now it's on record, so... <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Well, I think we should leave it there. Next episode, we are cutting into this. Yeah, maybe. Oh well, we kind of knew this and it really is only the real bad point of the whole car. So we've been pretty, pretty lucky up until this point. So don't forget, you only live once. Get out there in the shed and enjoy it. Get out there in the shed and enjoy it. You're getting better. I'm getting better. <laughs> so, ready? On, off the cuff. No. <laughs> Measure once, cut twice. Measure once, cut twice. Righto guys, we are going to leave it there. Yes, we, we kind of knew the roof was going to be the bad point. Uh, but next episode, we're cutting, grinding, welding, and fixing this thing. So don't forget, you only live once. Measure once, cut twice. That'll do, buddy. See you next time.